the Phoenicians are widely regarded as some of the best sailors of the ancient world. Over their millennium-long history, the Phoenicians revolutionized sailing and trading, sailing as far from their Lebanese homeland as Britain and Senegal, and established colonies across Anatolia, Cyprus, Northern Africa, Sicily, Sardinia, and even one in modern-day Tunisia that was so big it established its own colonies. So just who were these epic seafarers of the ancient world, and what impact did they have on the world they left behind? There are multiple theories as to where the Phoenicians came from, with most suggesting somewhere deeper in the Middle East, and some since ancient times even suggesting as far away as Bahrain. Though this isn't all that likely since Bahrain likely wasn't even inhabited around this time. Who the Phoenicians most certainly were, however, were a people speaking a Semitic language, related to Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, and several others, in an area then known as Phoenicia now known as Lebanon. The name Phoenicia does not, however, come from the Phoenicians, but rather is a Greek exonym, coming from the word phoenix, the name for a dye known in English as Tyrian purple, a vibrant purple dye named after the Phoenician city of Tyre, which came from boiling rock snails of the family Myrusidae, something incredibly challenging to make and thus only really available from the Phoenicians leading to both the name we know them by today and the perception of purple in Europe as a color only worthy of royalty, and also why purple isn't a color you see very much on flags. In their native Semitic language, however, the Phoenicians called their land Puts, and their people Ponim, but their language Kanaani, in reference to their greater ancestral homeland of Kanaan, also known in English as Canaan. Some of the earliest written records of the Phoenicians come from records written during Egyptian expansion into the Near East, with this region discussed heavily in the Amarna records. The region came under nominal Egyptian rule through the conquests of Thutmose III in the mid-15th century BC. They were still largely autonomous, with said Amarna records referencing how the Phoenician city-states still had their own political systems and competing merchant fleets. Phoenicia was a valuable asset for Egypt, with its access both to Mesopotamia via the Orontes and the Nahara Kabir rivers, and its supply of cedar wood, something Lebanon still likes to show off to this day. The cities grew rich and prosperous under Egyptian rule, especially under Amenhotep III, though this autonomy would generally wane with the greater threat of the Hittites to the north. Phoenicia, however, would break completely free of foreign rule with the late Bronze Age collapse of the 12th century BC. The early 1st millennium BC is not regarded well by most in the ancient world. This was a time right after the Bronze Age collapse and one known in Greek history as the Greek Dark Age, though this was more due to a lack of written records there from this time. As if proving the passage one man's trash is another man's treasure, however, this era was also the Golden Age of the Phoenician civilization, probably due to all the outside empires suddenly not coming to conquer them. And in fact, no one was really even around to pose effective competition, giving them vast dominion over the eastern Mediterranean. The Phoenicians set out to colonize much of the Mediterranean for many reasons, but the biggest reason was simply the geography of the region. The Levant is incredibly mountainous, which meant that it was more effective to ship goods between the cities of Phoenicia by sea. And in fact, many cities, notably Tyre, were situated at least partially on offshore islands, making seafaring even more appropriate. And thus, when it came time to expand in search of more resources, the logical direction was seawards. The Phoenicians would establish numerous cities across the Mediterranean, but some of the most important back home included Arvad, Gubal, also known as Byblos, Sidon, and Tyre. Calling this an empire, though, would be like calling ancient Greece an empire, in that it would be completely wrong, as these cities were actually loosely knit city-states, each with their own separate interests. Of course, most of their colonies also weren't always full-on city-states of their own, but rather were small trading outposts. However, in the 9th century BC, one colony would be destined to grow to huge heights. According to the city's founding mythology, around 814 BC, a Tyrian woman named Dido, tired, of the king's antics went off to modern-day Tunisia to found a new city, or as they would have said in Phoenician, Khart Hadasht, 
hence its English name, Carthage, a city that would create an empire spanning the western Mediterranean. Though their trade networks would continue to expand, their era of complete independence could not last forever. Seeing as they were a loose-knit collection of city-states that couldn't build much of a standing army, this didn't exactly put them in an optimal position to stay independent once the big powerful empires made a comeback, namely the Assyrian Empire, upon the ascension of King Shalmaneser III in 858 BC. Upon his death in 824 BC, however, the cities would maintain semi-independence. The Phoenicians would then be put under new management in the Babylonian Empire in 605 BC, and then by the Achaemenids in 539 BC. This period saw a gradual decline in Phoenician activity, with many moving out to the previously established colonies, notably Carthage. The Achaemenid Empire, however, would be swept from the region in 332 BC by Alexander the Great, who from now on on this channel will be referred to as Alexander the Conqueror, just because I really feel like that's a more fitting title for him, who notably spent months besieging the island of Tyre, building multiple causeways to do so, something that was no small feat, even for someone like Alexander. The Phoenicians still kept going under the Seleucid Empire and even under the Roman Republic until around the mid-first century BC. Their descendant, Carthage, however, would not be quite so lucky, fighting three wars with Rome and losing so badly that their capital was destroyed in one of the most thorough cultural erasures in history, with the ground reportedly salted so nothing would grow in memory of Carthage. For well over a thousand years, the Phoenicians ruled the waves of the Mediterranean, connecting the cultures of the Levant, the Greeks, Egypt, southern Italy, Numidia, and Hispania to each other, expanding their reach all across the sea, and innovating vastly, especially in the field of seafaring. Even aside from cedarwood and Tyrian purple, the Phoenicians were also renowned for their glasswork, metallurgy, ivory, and woodwork, and were even pioneers in mass production, with the Carthaginians utilizing cereal production and shipbuilding, allowing them to become the expert shipbuilders of the Mediterranean. Of course, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention their writing system, one that shares many similarities with the scripts used in Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, and other Semitic languages, which most likely evolved from Egyptian hieroglyphs. Oh, and also gave rise to basically every script used on the European continent today, from Latin to Greek to Cyrillic. But I already talked about all this in a previous video. Although the history of the Latin alphabet could be a good future video unto itself, given just how long the Phoenicians lasted, however, especially given how much of that history was spent under foreign rule, I guess it goes to show that if you want to be kept alive, make it so that you're only truly valuable alive, and at least somewhat free. I don't know, just try not to get on Rome's bad side though? Thank you as always for watching, be sure to like and share this video, and if you enjoy history, consider also checking out last week's video linked on screen, which is in my opinion one of the most important I've ever made, but hasn't really been getting many views at all despite having a very important message. Anyway, consider following me on social media, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.